Shalom and welcome to Good News Internet Broadcasting. My name is Bobby Wibowo. I'm one of the English ministry pastors at Sarang Nanum Community Church. And I welcome you to today's portion of the sermon. And before we go any further, I'd like to invite you to pray with me. Lord Jesus, we come before you with one heart. If any of us are feeling down today, Lord, because of whatever reason, pressures of life, situations in life, I pray, Lord, your servant prays that may you touch the lives of those who are listening right now, who are praying with me, O oh God. Father, if there are anyone who's sick, or you pray in the name of Jesus, may you touch them, O oh Lord. Give them healing, Father. Father, if anyone are in need of help, if they feel that they don't know which way to go, may you guide them, Father. May you send people to their path to guide them and to help them out. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We want to learn your words together in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Well, I'm so glad to be able to share the word of the Lord this evening. And this evening's sermon title is called, Jesus Went on His Way. It's taken from the book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 30. The book of Luke was a book that was written by a doctor, actually. God's servant, Luke, who was also a physician. Paul wrote in one of his letters that Luke was the beloved physician. So he must have been a really nice guy, a really good guy who, who was diligent in what he's doing and who really supported other ministers of the gospel as well. And I'd like to share with you today from the book of Luke chapter 4, verses 18 to 30. In this part of the story, we see the story about our Lord Jesus Christ on a Sabbath day. On the day of Sabbath, he was in the synagogue and he went and read the scroll, which was which contained in it the words from the book or the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah. And at that time, Jesus went up and spoke. It was written, it was his custom to do so. So we know one thing is certain, that Jesus really spent his time in the temple, in the synagogue, in the house of his father. And we know that Jesus, being called rabbi, had gone through so many years of education. He was diligent and he was also the carpenter's son his father, Joseph, his earthly father, was a carpenter. So we know that Jesus really was obedient to his parents and even beyond that, of course, to the Father in heaven. So many things that we can learn from Jesus. Jesus in this earth was a multi-talented person, a multitasker. But what's amazing is that Jesus never spent his time, his whole entire time, trying to force people to like him or trying to make everyone happy. Never did that. He stayed true to himself. He went and did the mission that God the Father had told him to do. And before we go any further again, we're going to read this together. I have the ESV version, English Standard Version, and I'd like to read this for you. Luke chapter 4, verses 18 to 30. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And He rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And they began to say to them, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him and marveled at the gracious words that were coming from his mouth. And they say, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said to them, Doubtless, you will quote to me this proverb, Physician, heal yourself. What we have heard you did at Capernaum, do here in your hometown as well. And he said, Truly I say to you, no prophet 
is acceptable in his hometown. But in truth, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and a great famine came over the land. And Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there, many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them were cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When they heard these things, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath. And they rose up and drove him out of the town and brought him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built. So that they could throw him down the cliff. But passing through their midst, he went away. Can we say it together? He went away. In the New Living Translation, it's first 30 was written like this. But he passed right through the crowd and went on his way. Jesus went on his way. You know, Jesus, the Son of God, did not spend his time trying to make everyone understand him, accept him. He didn't argue with them. Oh yes, there were moments that he reasoned with people, he talked with people, he, want, he wanted them to be touched. But there are also moments that Jesus literally just went away. The Bible here didn't tell us that Jesus tried to um, argue with them or try to win them over. Jesus went on his way. Isn't it amazing that in life we will meet people who will not like us? We will meet people who would like us in the beginning, but then this and that happens and they end up not liking us. Or we would just meet people who would be with us through thick and thin, through things that are happening in life, good and bad, they're still there. But there are also people who are like that, who wanted to do like what they did to Jesus. They wanted to throw him down the cliff. Can you imagine? They just came out of the house of worship. And if that's the case, we could see that these so-called spiritual people we're not really spiritual after all. The question is this, I have heard it said, people say, can a Christian lose their salvation? What if a person had been baptized, had accepted Jesus, but then they left the faith, they left the Christian faith, what will happen to them? My question is this, did they really accept Jesus? Okay, they were probably baptized, they have a certificate of baptism from the church. But the question is this, Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and then the second part is very important, my brothers and sisters, it says, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now the question is the second part. We can never judge a person's heart. But we can tell by their fruit, just like Jesus said, you will know them by their fruit. Now the thing is, the matter of the heart is one thing that even if you would cut my heart open, you won't really see the truth. You'll just see a physical heart, but you're not going to see the contents thereof. Our heart is full of many things, my brothers and sisters. But I do believe that if a person had sincerely accepted Jesus Christ into their heart, into their life as their Lord and Savior, and that person has confessed the Lord Jesus, and they believe in their heart that the Lord Jesus was raised from the dead, that person's life would have been changed. That person would have never left the faith. That person would be safe, and that's that. Their life is no longer theirs, but it is Christ who lives in them, that their body is the temple of the Lord. So the question is this, can a Christian still make mistakes? Yes, that's true, they can. But the point of the matter is this, that a true Christian, even if they stumble, they will get up again. But the Bible says that one disaster or one calamity is enough to overthrow the wicked. The righteous fall seven times, the Bible says, but they get up again. That's the amazing thing. Today, if that person is you, if you're feeling in your heart 
and you're asking, Lord, perhaps I've been a Christian all my life, but perhaps deep down in my heart, I'm not quite sincere. Today, why don't you look into your hearts? If you have confessed with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you need to then also believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, that Jesus will come back again. Jesus who was raised from the dead, rose up to heaven, and he's going to come back. We don't know when Jesus is going to come back. The Bible says no one knows the day or the hour. The angels don't know. The son, the son doesn't know. Only the Father knows. But it is precisely why, because we don't know that we should live right before God. I've shared this to someone before that if a person who's a Christian say that, oh, you know, I'm a Christian, uh, God will forgive me, then I'll just do all the wrong things and then repent. I will just sleep around and then repent. What if I just do drugs and then I repent, right? Um, wh what if I just do that? The question is this, my brothers and my sisters, what if that person keeps getting addicted to what they're doing and in the middle of them doing such things, the Lord calls them home, right? Or takes them away from this world. They die, right? What will happen then, right? I always thought to myself, what if I was, I'm in the middle of doing something I, should, I know I shouldn't be doing, then in the midst of it, Lord Jesus comes into this earth. What will happen? We hear so many stories of so-called Christians doing this and that, or people who perhaps you hear uh, stories about them and you're, you're asking, you're thinking, is that person really a Christian? Why, if they are a Christian, why would they do this and that? Well, the question is this. We have to ask ourselves then, is that person a true follower of Christ? Is that person a real believer? Because Jesus Christ had told us in the book of Matthew chapter 7, in the last days, in the day, in the day when Jesus comes again and he became the judge, many people will do what? They'll come and say, Lord, we cast out demons in your name. Lord, we had prophesied in your name. And so on and so forth. And Jesus would say, I don't know you. And the question is this, who are those people? In Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, 22, and 23, they had prophesied, cast out demon, and they did mighty works in the name of Jesus. My brothers and my sisters, the fact of the matter is, is that the Lord will let the wheat and the weeds, just like it's written in the book of Matthew, chapter 13, the Lord will leave them be till the end of days. If you read it yourself in the book of Matthew, chapter 13, you will find right there, Jesus Christ, God the Father, did not differentiate until the end of days because if the weeds were plucked out, people who are you know, not true believers were plucked out, then the believers might get plucked together with them. So the Lord will allow these people to be there till the end. But then in the end of days when everything is done, that's where they're all going to be fixed up where the weeds, the real ones, are going to be put in one place to be with the Lord Jesus. And the weeds, W-E-E-D-S, will be put in another place. That is not with Jesus. Now, we shouldn't then spend our time pointing fingers. Oh yes, that's not a real Christian and this is one who is. But let us spend our time correcting ourselves looking deep into our hearts, asking the Lord, Lord, have I done right in this life? Our Lord Jesus Christ, during his three and a half years of ministry in the world, in this earth, 
did not spend his time just trying to make people happy or just trying to make things right with everyone. Jesus was okay with things not being okay all the time. Jesus was all right with people who didn't like him. Of course, he would have loved that they would repent, but Jesus just knew that making everyone happy is not his calling in this earth. My brothers and my sisters, our times in this world, it's limited. It's not limitless. So let us choose to spend time with the people that we love. Sow the seeds to the people who are not believers. Live right before God. There's no more time to play around. No more time to do things half and half. Half of our feet in the world, half in the church. Or half in righteousness, half in unrighteousness. No, it's not enough. We cannot do that. The book of Revelation tells us that those who are lukewarm will be spit out. Let us choose to be like Jesus, whom in the midst of the difficulties, he passed right through the crowd and went on his way. My brothers and my sisters, yes, we are called to be responsible. We are called to do things right. But we are also called sometimes to walk away or go away, not from the things that are our responsibilities, but from the things that even if we would spend days, weeks, months, and years are not going to change anyway. People who are against us, yes, we love them, but we can't be spending all the time with them at the expense of not fulfilling what the Lord has in store for us to do. The book of Luke chapter 4 teaches us as well that sometimes the Lord will call people, will do mighty works for people who are perhaps seen as not being in the top ladder of society. Perhaps they're seen as poor. Or Naaman, who are seen as, wow, someone who's a non a non-believer at first. But then we knew in the end that Naaman had his life changed because of an encounter with Elisha. Elisha showed him the love of God. Just like Jesus, we know that we should be okay with not being liked by everyone. No matter how good you've done something, there will at least be a person who wouldn't like what you are doing. No matter how nice you are, there will be another person who say, he's not nice enough, she's not nice enough. So why don't we do like Jesus did? Sometimes pass through and walk. Keep our eyes focused on doing the work that the Lord has in store for us. Do your job well, do your studies well, do your business well. Focus on your family, take care of them well. Pray to the Lord well, believe well, knowing that, Lord, I don't know how long I have in this earth, but I want to make sure, oh God, that as long as I'm in this earth, that I'm doing things the right way, the way that you want me to live. Don't you ever feel, my brothers and sisters, that, oh, I wish I could be like such and such person who lived a messed up life for all this time and then repented and became a Christian. Well, you know what? Everybody's got a price to pay. And I'm sure those people who have been so-called living the life out there in the world must have felt that, man, I wasted my times. And those who are living right should not feel bad thinking, have I lived a boring life? No, you have not. You have lived a life of example. You have lived a life full of blessings. You have paid the price for your future 10, 20, 30, 40 years in the future. If you do the right thing today, sowing the right seeds, the good seeds, just know that the Lord will reward you for it. Focus on what is most important in your life. Focus on the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ loves you. Focus on the fact that you have so many things to be grateful for. And if you're faced with difficulties, 
Do your best. Rely on the Lord. But there are times that we have to do like what Jesus did. In the verse 30, chapter 4 of the book of Luke. But passing through their midst, he went away. In ESV it says that. And in the book of Luke as well, same verse, same chapter. In an NLT version says this. But he passed right through the crowd and went on his way. Jesus went on his way. Sometimes we have to go on our way as well. Today maybe you have to go on your way from toxic relationships, abusive relationships. Get help. Talk to someone. Speak up. No one deserves to be mistreated. And if you're listening to this and you're the person who has been mistreating someone, repent. Change your ways. And my prayer is that we can live right because we don't know when our Lord Jesus is going to come again. He might be coming soon. He is coming soon. We just don't know how soon. Might be sooner than you think. Therefore, my brothers, my sisters, I'd like to invite you for a word of prayer right now, especially for anyone who has not yet received Jesus Christ as their Savior. Would you pray this prayer with me? Open your heart. Accept Jesus. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart, O Lord. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. O Lord God, change me, O Lord. Make me a person who can be an example, a salt and a light. Amen. And right now, O oh God, your servant is about to pray for anyone else who are listening. Lord, may you bless them. Bless all the listeners, God. If anyone's sick, I pray for healing. If anyone, Lord, has an emotional wound, Father, Father God, may you heal them. The blood of Jesus heals you. And right now, O oh Lord, we thank you for your words. Speak to us, God. Be with us. We know you will never leave us nor forsake us. Give us peace, joy, and strength to live life every day, to be more and more like you every day in every way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, and I will see you next week.